Back in the good old days, you could just start a rotary or piston engine by hand. But engines have changed a lot since then. They're now enormous and highly energy intensive. These huge engines are fired up in stages. We start small and work our way up. Typically, for a commercial aircraft, there are four steps to start up. The auxiliary power unit, air turbine starter, ignition and clutch. Here we have a bird's eye view blueprint of a typical commercial aircraft. First, the pilot sends a startup command to the system. This activates the electrical power supplied by a large onboard battery. This drives an electrical motor. The motor will turn a shaft on the auxiliary power unit, also known as an APU. The APU is a small, lightweight, single-shaft turbine engine. It sits in the rear of an aircraft and is typically the high-pitched noise you can hear while the aircraft is parked. The electrical motor gets the APU up to a speed where it can begin to burn fuel. The most important function is that the APU delivers high volumes of slightly compressed air. Next, we need to get the main engines going. This process starts with one engine. To start this engine, high volumes of air are fed from the APU to a device called an air turbine starter. This device is located under the main engine and has turbine blades which rotate when air is fed past them. This rotation is transmitted via gears to the main engine high pressure shaft. Turning this shaft rotates the engine's compressor blades which draws air in through the engine and begins the compression process. As air is drawn through the engine, the large fan at the front of the engine begins to rotate. Now, everything is in motion. The air turbine starter continues to put energy into the system until the required engine speed is reached, usually about 20% of the engine's maximum RPM. At this point, there is enough air compression within the system to start injecting fuel and igniting it with spark plugs. A very basic spark plug igniter is the one found in home gas stoves. The energy produced by burning fuel increases the engine speed until it reaches about 50-60% to 60 of its maximum speed. At this point, the air pressure from the compressor is so high that the fuel self-ignites. The spark plugs turn off and the engine is now self-sustaining. Once the engine is self-sustaining, we need to disconnect the air turbine starter from the engine. This is achieved through a mechanical wonder known as a centrifugal clutch. This is a 2D representation of the clutch. The center gear here is connected to the air turbine starter. The outer gear is connected to the engine. This clutch has teeth or poles which are spring loaded. When stationary, the spring force fully engages the teeth so that the two gears rotate together. However, as the rotation speed increases, the centrifugal force acting on the teeth begins to offset the spring force. For example, when I spin this jug filled with water, the water moves up to the sides. The faster I spin it, the higher the water goes due to more centrifugal force. Once the engine reaches a critical speed, the centrifugal force overcomes the spring force and the poles fully retract. This disconnects the air turbine starter from the engine and the air turbine starter shuts off. Now we've got the first engine up and running. We need to get the second engine started. The exact same process is followed, except instead of using the APU to feed the air turbine starter for the second engine, we use air from the first engine. Let's now listen to the whole startup process so you know exactly what's going on in your next flight. Listen carefully to the sound the engine makes during startup. Watch the low pressure and high pressure shaft speeds vary along with the exhaust gas temperature.
And that's it, we're ready for takeoff. If you found this video fun and helpful, please consider subscribing for more fun videos in the future and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. Thanks for learning with me today and I'll see you next time.